goblins, fairies, fireys, muppets, music, magic balls, and an icon's rock star package. I'm Aaron Sagers, and in this blaster to the past, we are entering the labyrinth to nerd out about this 1986 fantasy classic directed by Jim Henson. The movie cost $25 million to make, but did not exactly storm the box office. It opened in eighth place and only grossed $12.7 million domestically. Henson was devastated by the failure, but was happy to learn about the film's cult following before his death in 1990. Sure, it doesn't look like much now, but this photorealistic owl is the first CGI animal attempted in a feature film. Terry Jones of Monty Python gets sole screenplay credit, but executive producer George Lucas contributed to rewrites. After more than 25 treatments with a lot of other writers, Jones said he didn't feel very close to the final version. The final feature directed by Henson, Labyrinth was based around the work of illustrator and concept designer Brian Froud, who previously worked with Henson on The Dark Crystal. Froud collaborated with Terry Jones on books about goblins and the popular Lady Coddington's Pressed Fairy book. Sarah's baby brother Toby is actually played by Froud's son of the same name, who grew up to be a puppeteer. He said he believes he peed on Goblin King Jareth, played by David Bowie, the first time they met. Fun fact, that is a big faux pas in the Goblin Kingdom. Well, love. <laughs> actually, let's call out baby Toby as a terrible actor. He was quite the screamer. So much trouble over such a little thing, but not for long. So Bowie held a puppet named Suti out of frame to distract baby Toby and keep him quiet, which might explain that zen-like baby face. Speaking of children, Bowie described Jareth as, quote, a spoiled child, vain and temperamental, kind of like a rock and roll star. But Henson viewed Bowie as anything but temperamental and called him very normal, well-grounded, and straightforward. But he almost did not use the man who was Major Tom in the movie. Ground control to Major Tom. Musicians considered for the part of Jareth included Michael Jackson and Sting. <laughs> Henson wanted Sting until his kids convinced him to go for Bowie. Meanwhile, 14-year-old Jennifer Connelly was cast pretty quickly as Sarah. She was cast over other possible actors for the role, including Helena Bonham Carter, Sarah Jessica Parker, Ali Sheedy, Marissa Tomei, Laura Dern, Lily Taylor, and Yasmin Bleep. 30 Rock's Jane Krakowski was also a top candidate. Henson enjoyed Connelly's presence because he could talk straight to her and didn't have to, quote, tiptoe around her feelings. Early script changes were due to the story too closely resembling legend, in production at the same time. But the production got into trouble with Where the Wild Things Are author, Maurice Sendak. Sendak was friends with Henson, but he thought Labyrinth sounded too much like his book, Outside Over There, and sicked his lawyers on Henson to warn him to cease production. If that sounds stinkier than being stuck in the bog of eternal stench, think how Henson felt. Oh my god! Henson changed some things in the film, like calling his wild things fireys, and gave Sindak a special acknowledgement in the credits. He also placed where the wild things are in Sarah's room. But Henson was hurt by his friend, and in Jim Henson the biography, author Brian J. Jones suggests Sindak was closer with Henson's wife, Jane. Since the two were separated, the author thinks the threat was more indignation over Jim's split than anything. Look alive! One of the fireys is voiced by Danny John Jules, who voiced the cat on Red Dwarf. Tomorrow, I'm gonna see if I can't have sex with something. <laughs> Other creatures were performed by Warwick Davis, Kevin Clash, aka Elmo from Sesame Street, and Frank Oz, who you might remember as Yoda. From Yoda to a Sith Lord, on the first day of filming, April 15th, 1985, George Lucas visited the set with Darth Vader, who presented Henson with champagne and a good luck card. Labyrinth also has connections to Star Trek. Before she was Dr. Beverly Crusher on Star Trek The Next Generation, Gates McFadden was the director of choreography and puppet movement on the movie and was responsible for the ballroom dancing. It's a crystal, nothing more. The complicated crystal ball movements were arranged and performed blind by juggler Michael Motion as he was behind Bowie and slipped his arms under the singer to make his hands look like Jareth's. Bowie had fun with the stunt but sympathize with motion. But the rest of Jareth was all Bowie. The area is the fandom name for Bowie's, um, little Ziggy. And he thought his costume was inappropriate for the target demographic. Bowie did take up a lot of area in the movie, though. His face as Jareth is hidden in seven different scenes, like here, and here, wait, there he is, and another, right here, and here. 
There are other Easter eggs right at the beginning of the movie in Sarah's room, which is populated by characters and set pieces that will eventually be seen throughout the film. One missing Easter egg is a book by Brian Froud, which Henson simply forgot to include. Every creature by Froud and Terry Jones had a story. For instance, the junk lady's real name is Agnes. Well, look here! The Goblin Companion book by Froud and Jones describes every creature from the movie. Aside from the two humans, an important co-star was the dwarf Hoggle. Now, don't try to embarrass me. I've got no pride. He was voiced by Jim Henson's son, Brian, who also controlled the puppet's expressions remotely, along with three other people, while an actor was in the suit. They all had to coordinate so the performances matched. Actually, poor Hoggle, he went south. The Hoggle costume was lost for some time until it was found in a crate at the unclaimed baggage center in Scottsboro, Alabama, where it currently resides on display in their museum. While Henson's son had a big job in the movie, this is the first time Jim did not perform a major character in one of his own films, focusing instead entirely on directing. Another puppet co-star was, of course, Ludo. Ludo. Ludo was alternately performed by two puppeteers because the puppet weighed an incredibly heavy 75 pounds, too heavy for one person. Ludo was an instant star and got to hang out with Princess Diana and Prince Charles at the London premiere of the movie. Bowie recorded five songs for the film with Magic Dance and Underground released as singles. What kind of magic spell to use? And by the way, the baby would not cooperate in the recording studio, so Bowie made his own cooing baby noises because it, quote, couldn't put two gurgles together. And baby said... Goblin actors were simply directed to, quote, just be goblins and party down in scenes with 48 puppets and 12 actors on harnesses. Even in real life, Jareth does like a good party. The Labyrinth of Jareth is a two-day masquerade ball in Los Angeles where costumes are inspired by the movie. Inspired by M.C. Escher's drawing, Relativity, this complex scene involved multiple Jareths on set at a time. I move the stars for no one. Sharp viewers will notice Escher's work was hanging in Sarah's bedroom, and a pic of Bowie can be seen alongside Sarah's mom in this newspaper clipping. The Relativity set piece also showed up in Labyrinth, the computer game, released on Commodore 64 and Apple II systems. It was a real-time in-game adventure to solve Jareth's maze, and an RPG-style version was released only for Japanese markets. After production wrapped, a small group of about 10 designers and builders from the film became the first permanent staff at the Jim Henson Creature Shop. Labyrinth has had a continued legacy with comic book tie-ins and spin-offs, with a prequel comic about Jareth's backstory in the works. Bowie thought Jareth was reluctant to be the Goblin King and would rather be hanging out in Soho. Days after Bowie's death in January 2016, Sony announced a reboot of Labyrinth was in the works. But Lisa Henson, Jim's daughter, and Guardians of the Galaxy screenwriter Nicole Perlman have been in talks to do something Labyrinth-related since 2014. Not a reboot, not a remake, but a continuation. And that brings us to the Goblin King's castle at the center of the Labyrinth and the end of yet another blaster to the past. Let us know what your favorite Labyrinth memories are in the comments below, and don't miss no, our other no. great videos and all our dispatches from the realm of fandom at blaster.com. Even with the involvement...